this is equal to x over x minus 2. So if you will recall the process for determining these intervals, we have to start by finding our critical points. How do we find our critical points? Take the derivative, set it equal to 0, which is usually all we have to worry about. But in this case, we got one more piece because where else can we have critical points? When it's undefined, when our function's undefined, and that'll happen when the denominator is equal to zero. Most of the time we don't have denominators, so we kind of skip over that part, but this one we're going to have a denominator because this is going to be the quotient rule when we take the derivative. Okay, so f prime of x here is low d high minus high d low all over low squared. Let's go ahead and simplify that numerator because it will simplify. Okay, we've got uh, x minus 2 times 1, so that's just x minus 2, minus x times 1, so that's just minus x. And in this case, the x's cancel, so all we're left with is negative 2 in the numerator. So here's a case where our function, uh, our derivative, never actually equals 0. Because where a fraction with equals 0 is where the numerator equals 0. Well, the numerator is only negative 2. So negative 2 doesn't equal 0, but our critical points are going to come from where the denominator equals 0 or when the derivative is undefined. Pardon this interruption. At this time, we need any students going on the FFA field trip to report to the front lobby. Thank you. So we take the square root of both sides. The square root of 0 is just 0. That's nice. And then we add 2. So our critical point is x equals 2, which kind of makes sense in the context of this problem because this is a rational function. Um, critical points are obviously where we have maxes and mins or where our um, maxes or mins or where our function is our derivative is undefined, well, it can be undefined if the function is discontinuous. We know that it's discontinuous at 2. Anyways, number line, our only critical point is 2. We need to pick a test value to the left and to the right. To the left of 2, I would pick 0. To the right of 2, let's pick 3. Remember, I put the derivative above the line, the original under the line. f prime of 0. Let's look at that. When we plug 0 into the derivative, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, but then we square it, so it becomes positive, but the numerator is negative. So we've got a negative over a positive, so that's a negative. So that means our original function is decreasing from negative infinity to 2. I'll go ahead and write that out. f of x is decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to 2. I always use open brackets because it changes at 2. It's neither increasing nor decreasing at 2. When we plug in 3, 3 minus 2 is uh, 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 divided by 1 is still negative. Okay, so our function actually doesn't change. It is decreasing for its entire domain. Now, you would not say that it's decreasing for all real numbers because, again, it's discontinuous at 2. It has no value, so technically it's, it's doing neither 1 at 2, uh, but it's always decreasing. Let me show you um, graphically just to confirm that because I'm Personally, I'm always wary when um, I get that it doesn't actually change, but I know that a lot of times with rational functions it does not. So here's the graph. You can see as you move from left to right, that left side is always decreasing. The right side is always decreasing. Okay? Um, so this function is decreasing from negative infinity to 2 and from 2 to infinity. All right, so that's all I got.